Torah talks about the Levim, the Levites, being designated by Hashem to be Hashem's army. It talks about army, which is groups and leaders, and you, 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 you blow the trumpets when you travel, and you have the Anam, Akobo, and you have Amuda Eish. It talks about the beauty of Hashem's presence at the camp of the army of Hashem. The army of Hashem, it's in the level that you have Mamish the Shekhinah there. Okay. Yisroi, which sees all that. What happened? It says right before that, it says that Moshe Rabbeinu told Yisroi, we now going to travel in three days right away to Eretz Israel. And Hashem will give us the good. And come with us. Because if you come with us, the good that Hashem promised us will be for you. Because you are a convert. So whatever Hashem told the Jewish people that He's going to give, He's going to give also to a convert. Hashem is going to be good for converts. So what happens? Ki Hashem diber tov al Yisrael. Hashem spoke good on the Jewish people. So what he says, Vayoyim evelov lo elech. Yisrael says, I'm not going to go. Ki im al-out si melonati elech. I'm going to go back to my land. And the way I was born. So they pressed him again. Please don't leave us. You know, you, 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 our eyes. And the good Hashem spoke to us, do you? It will do good to you. And he didn't listen. He went away. Later on, he came back. So this is very strange. Imagine Hashem, a person, converts, and they told him, let's go to Israel. Hashem says, let's go to Israel. What to give us the good? He doesn't want to travel. He doesn't want to come to Israel. He wants to go back to the city to where he was born. And then later on, it says they traveled, what you know, takes through three days, they travel one day, and the nation started to complain. They're looking for ways how to break away from Hashem. It chooses. So fire comes down, kills them. Then the Asafsu, the Erebrav, they want a desire, and they cause the Jewish people to cry. Who's going to give us food? We remember the fish that we ate in Egypt for free. And the, and the kishuim, the zucchinis, the abatichim, the watermelon, chatzir, betzalim, onion, shumim, garlics. And now we only have the man. So Ashi says, what do you mean it was for free? What's it for free? If Heaven, hey, to build bricks was not given for free, so they gave him fish for free. Must be means free from the mitzvot. We're looking again to break away from the mitzvot Hashem. So what happens? Hashem gives him meat and he kills them all. He kills a lot of people. So the question that comes to my mind is what's going on? Yisroi, when they told him, let's go to Israel. Let's get all the good and accept the punishments of the yoke of Malchus Shamayim. He went away, he didn't get punished. And here, the Erevra, they want to come to Eretz Yisrael. They converted. They want to go to Eretz Yisrael. They travel into the desert. They go through tests because they walking three days in one day. A lot of walk, walking all day. And they're looking for ways to break away. And Hashem kills them. Why? 
What's the difference between the two? And if Hashem put it all, Hashem put it all in one space, in one retze, the cups of tissues are very big message. This is my message today. That's what I understand the message. Again, what do we have? We have the Levites that totally designate themselves to Hashem, they're the army of Hashem. We have the Jewish people which part of the army of Hashem. Who is the elite, the national guard? It's 22,000 Levim. Uben Choyomar, Kum Hashem, Rik Alperim, Rosh Yisrael. 22,000, Hashem comes in, his rest in the, in the national guards, the elite is the Levites. They, they designate them, they pick them up, they designate the Hashem, the totally guards of Hashem, totally immerse the bodies of Hashem. The Jewish people are the army of Hashem, and they stand in st areas, and they blow the trumpets when they travel. It's all army, army of Hashem. Hashem shows his present army of Hashem. Who gets attached to the army of Hashem? The Evra. Evra who converts. Now the Evra who inherit the land of Eretz Israel. The Evra who has the same problem. Yisrael comes by, he converts. He's the father-in-law of Moshe Rabbeinu. He converts and he comes again. And they tell them, let's go there to Israel, come with us. He says, no, I'm not going to get the land. I'm a convert, it's not true. I'm going to give you not as inheritance, but as a present. And you're going to get as a present. And you can come in, you can have all the good. And what happened? You listen. Nothing happens. The converts that stayed and took the yoke to come to Israel, there about. What happens? They go on the way, they travel, and they start crying and complaining. Hashem kills them, and they complain again. This thing, remember, was free food, free fish from no mitzvahs. Now, you take us there to Israel, you're giving us land, but with the land comes a big yoke. You give us a carrot, but with a carrot comes a big onion. You're giving us the land of Israel, the good, but now we have to keep all the Torah mitzvahs. And the Ramban says that in Chutzlah is obligation of Torah mitzvahs is only Bechinu. The main obligation is in Eretz Israel. That's the land of Hashem. And not only that, not all the mitzvahs were given yet. A lot of the mitzvahs were given later. So they realize now, they said now we prohibit to marry family. Family relationships are, are forbidden. So they start crying. They want to break away from that yoke. So Hashem kills them. So Yisrael that ran away, says, I don't want to be part of that. He didn't get killed. He didn't get punished. And those converts that took the yoke and traveled there to Israel, and they went through the desert, they get punished. What's the difference? What's the difference between the two? And the answer is very simple. If you want to be part of the congregation, the army of Hashem, look what happened. It says, The Asafsuf, I don't want to say in English, but the word Asafsuf means gathered, scattered, gathered relics of people, leftovers. Relics, Asafsuf means, we want to say, street guys, leftover guys is the Erevra, is the converts of the added to the Jewish people. They desire, desire, and later on we know it's the desire. It says, They went back, and also the children of Israel cried. What does it mean also? They affected the Jewish people, the army of Hashem. Because they were in the midst of the Jewish people, they took the yoke to come to Israel as converts. But they start hurting the Jewish people with inside. They desire, desire, they start crying. And they affected the Jewish people. And the Jewish people also start crying. And they built up the desire of breaking away from Hashem. Oh, remember the food free. We want to break free. Let's be free. Hashem is giving us a carrot, He's giving us Israel, a land of milk and honey. But it's with us about a lot of yoke of Taylor Mitzvahs. And according to Chazal, Look what it says. Unbelievable. 
who cry. They are showing the wicked ones. Oh, Mukti, who got hurt? All the bad ones, all the, the, the leaders got hurt. Affected the leaders. The Gemara says, Kashe Gerin Israel Kesapak. Converts are hard to the Jewish people like leprosy. So there's many explanations. The Rambam explanation, there's seven explanations in Tosfa, in Masechet Kiddushin. But the Rambam explanation is as follows. The Rambam says, why hard converts to the Jewish people like leprosy? Because the reason they convert is with a goal, with an interest. And when the interest doesn't fit, they fall off. When we call a convert against Tzedek, when later on after he converts, and you see the interest goes away, and he still stays and he connects to Hashem, we know that he's against Tzedek. We don't call him again. I don't call him a new title. Against Tzedek, a justice, righteous death. Means his justice was justice, was righteous for him to move to be part of the Jewish people. I want to explain here what happened. The Jewish people are the same. What happened? They cried. They, 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 okay, we want to get the land. That interest. We want to get the land. But suddenly it comes with a lot of obligations. Keep the Torah and mitzvahs. Yo, can I marry family? Forbidden relations. No free love. Free, free, you can do what you want. No, rules and regulations. So then what happened? What is the next stage? So, so when Yisrael went away, he kind of said, I'm going away. Okay, went away. But when the other converts stayed among the Jewish people, and they faked themselves, and the interests are away, and they started to break away, and they, and they caused the Jewish people also to break away, that was the biggest destruction of the Jewish people. We look all along through the desert, through all the Nisyonot, it's brought down in the Rishoni that it all started from the Eren, but affected the Jewish people. Affected the Jewish people. So what really do I see in the Pasha? I see in the Pasha, Hashem is saying, there is the elite, the 22,000 Levim, which they were pure all the generations. It says in the Rambam, that in Mitzrayim, the Levites were never, there was never, they were never under the control of the Egyptians. They were learning Torah, they were the priests of the Jewish people. They had base medicines learning Torah. You had the Jewish nation as a spread, as a, as a mass. They were focused on Hashem. But they were easy to be influenced. And you had the converts that Moshe Rabbeinu took responsibility, they converted them, and he brought them out of the Jewish people. And that caused a trouble because they mingles among the Jewish people, and when the interests went, interest went away, they started to influence the Jewish people how to break. I remember many years ago in Eretz Israel, you never had in the first of May, whatever it is, fifth of May, the Goyish holiday, Sylvester, whatever they call it, you never had parties. First of January, you never heard such a thing. That's going in Europe. There was a big aliyah from one million Jews, over many Jews from Russia. And two thirds of them were going, half going. Fathers Jewish, mothers are going. Suddenly the whole land of it has changed. They sell, there, there is a chain in the Israel that sells not kosher meat, I'm not gonna say what. There is, and, and they started to influence the Jewish people. And as if it became, and first of May, you could go all over Tel Aviv, all over the country, as if there's another holiday, what do you mean? Well, years ago when I was a child, you remember, they looked really crazy. I mean, even not only just Jews had no have, I mean, in the mind to have such a celebration, what to do with us. Now, let's celebrate the first day of the uh, calendar day of the Chinese. I mean, nothing with us. Halloween, nothing with us. No connection. No connection to us. But when they went in, started niggling the Jewish people. That's the biggest destruction. And that's what Hashem is telling us the story. 
does not mean that we don't accept converts. Definitely we accept them. But it only means the teaching that we have to work on ourselves. What is our inner being, our inner interest? And when we don't have to get our interest, we really connect to our shame. I spoke about it yesterday. What does training, what does training mean? A lot of people come into Yeshiva. A hundred people walk into the Yeshiva. I can say a hundred people, everyone has his own interest. We also have an interest of Hashem learning Torah, but okay, it's mixed, all mixed with many other interests. And my job as a Rosh Yeshiva and rabbis and Yeshiva, as the vehicle of the Yeshiva, is to gather together the many parts of the body and the soul interested to focus into Hashem and let go of the other interests in order for them to focus on the same. So I don't look at it as a bad eye. Oh, this guy's a phone and baloney. It's full of other interests. Okay. I says after the Cheta Ego, or after the uh, after the Oda uh, Marisha ate from Eitz Adas, good and bad is mixed by every person. It's almost impossible to make it pure act. Every person in the human being in this world is always mixed with good and bad. There's levels. There's levels of Tzadikim, levels of Shoyim, there's many levels. But to do something really pure, as the Gemara says, we brought down the Rambam, and why Hashem gave us 613 mitzvahs, the Rambam said, that uh, through all your whole life, we're doing many mitzvahs, maybe you're going to hit one bingo, one mitzvah pure in your whole life. Maybe. It's a maybe. We don't even know. Only Hashem knows. And to do many times mitzvahs, maybe after many years of reading Torah and doing mitzvahs, you can do one pure act just for the sake of Hashem. It takes a lifetime. You could do more than one. It's very hard. It's very hard to do that. As Abayah says, Oh, you know, what is it? What about you, Ulala Maba? says, yeah, one time I gave my food, my, my pooling food plate, I gave it to a poor person. What do you do? He taught to you at the school, he did chesed, all that. He says, that. he says, that I cannot see in myself was pure. What time? In my lifetime? What time? He looks back, says, maybe that I did pure. And I, I'm so loyal about it. What time? So it's a very hard task. So we understand that. But doesn't mean that because of that you break away. Okay, I'm a human being, a full of fallacies, therefore I'm free. And I heard a word from my father, Zechet Sadi, the Kodesh Nefon. The Pasuk says, David Amelech says, King David says, Omar Novo Beliboy. You know what the word Nava mean? Nava. Nava. Low life. Low life. A low life says in the heart, in his heart. Omar Novo Beliboy. A low life says in his heart. This King David says, it says in, 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 in the healing. A low life says in his heart. And there is God in our hearts, in our amongst us. So the Rosh Hashiva is the is, why David Amelech has to speak about a low life that says the stupid things? There is God in our in, 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 amongst us. What is it? What is this? Says, you know what it means? Ayesh Elohim Bekirbeo. A lot of people really acting like this guy. What do they say? They say, there's no Elohim. Elohim is Mila Sadim. Everything is Yud Kevok Kerachamim. Mercy. Hashem loves us so much. And he knows my fallacies. And he always has mercy. So I, I'm a free bird. Uh, I love Hashem. Hashem knows that. And I'll do good things. But he's going to let me off. Anyway, keep a kid bail, there's no, there's no Mida Sadin amongst us. We can be free. That's a low life. This is a low life. A low life is to say, oh, because I have fallacies, therefore Hashem looks over it, and there's no judgment, and there's no rules on a relation. This is a low life. Why? He makes our life low. Because the whole power of a true's life is there are rules, and when we overcome our desires, we can get reward. And if it wasn't for judgment in the world, you wouldn't be able to get reward. You wouldn't have any value of choosing the good. So the whole, the whole makpeza, you say makpeza. Springboard. Springboard. The power behind getting reward and connecting to Hashem is the rules and, and, and the laws and the, and the judgment, the mida in the world, the oiki. So Omar, Nobel, Belimoy, we are those low lines. And the Lakeem Kirbeil, who is loyal like him and amongst us. Oh, is it only love? Hashem is love. Hippie. Love, free love. Hashem love. Do you believe in God? I love Hashem. I believe in God. 
They have my way of serving. He knows me. I shouldn't you know me. They sit, sometimes they stand up for Hashem and they cry, please God. You know, they sick in the hospital. As the Shlomo HaMelech says, The ways of a man is straight in his own eyes. The depths of the heart, only Hashem knows. This is exactly a low life. Where are all life things? My ways are straight, they're straight. You know, here, I'm a little bit here, probably here, but you know, Hashem knows I'm a human being. What do you want to say? There's nothing that he's going to let me go. That's a low life. That's not an elevated life. So what do we learn from this whole story of the converts and Yisroi, the Levites, and the Erev and how even the Jewish people? Is we always have to check our interest. It's brought down in Chazal and the Zohar Kodesh, in an expansion, that the reason why they were able to influence the leaders of the Jewish people, because it says the fire, the first time when the Jewish people left at Sinai, they traveled there to Israel, and three days they walked one day, and Hashem planned to bring them into Israel in three days. Right away, they to Israel. It says fire, they complain, they break away, they break away and fire A, the Mikseh Shamachane. What do you have there? Rabbi Nashi says, the Muktzim, the best one, the better ones. They were able to influence the leaders of the Jewish people. How? How the converts was able to affect the long dead, the learnings of the Torah, the Chachonim, the leaders. So the Son of God says, in Parshas Shlachim, that the leaders of the Jewish people lost their interest because they thought now we're in the, we're in the, we're in the desert, we are leaders. The minute we're going to enter into Israel, we're not going to be leaders because there's no need for us anymore. We're not an intense and small condensed group. Everybody's in his own land, his own uh, a tree, his own pomegranate, his own land, spread all out, maybe meet three times a year in the temple, in Mishkan, in Rege. Everybody's all spread out. So they don't need the leaders anymore. So our power will go away. So the Erevra took the interest of breaking away from mitzvah, tapped it on to the interest of the leaders that are losing power, losing the seat, and put it together and find a way to the level to complain against Hashem. Which the the, 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 the the leaders, the leaders, the Tamil Rahman, they knew all about Hashem. They saw Sinai. They saw the real, yeah, Al Sinai is not fire and brimstone, as the Rabbi Moon Hukim says. Al Sinai is a revelation of Hashem. They stood Hashem the deep away. So how can they break away? Because the interest of a person, that's what it means. That's noble, that's a low life. The interest of a person twists his mind and he becomes like bride. He doesn't see strength. So we must always learn Musa. With our learning Musa, it's very hard to correct the ways. We can be learning in Yeshiva 20, 40, 50 years, and we never really change our ways. We can learn a lot of Gemaras, more Gemaras, more Mishnayas, more Aloha, more Iyu, more and more, just adding more information. You're not changing your being. That's why you must have Musa. What does Musa mean? Musa means somebody tells you off. Who can tell me off? You tell me off. You're worse than me. You tell me my, that I have little, uh, you have a big beam on your head. We talk many times, you have to hire someone, a good friend, a good rabbi. The Rosh Hashiva said, Tzad Joker used to say, I'm not a Muslim people. Most people couldn't handle it, they ran away. They couldn't handle it, actually, they hated it. Mami Shlik, they couldn't handle it, it's us. And he, you tell me what to do, you're worse than me. We used to have even fights at Erev Shabbos. I remember at one time, somebody and we had a class here, and after we finished the class, somebody used to start to scream at the Rosh Hashiva. And he said, you know why you're sick. Because you're telling me off. I'm saying, tell me, you know, tell me off the Rosh Hashim. You're screaming and shouting and crying. He, he said he said it from a very heart broken. They couldn't accept the Musa. So the Rosh Hashim told them, it says in the Gemara, that a doctor, sorry, a father that hits his son, or a Rebbe that hits his students, even if he kills him by mistake, he hit him too much, He's exempt, he doesn't go to exile. She says, he told, he told them, you know, as, as the Rosh Hashiva, I'm allowed even to kill you. If I'm allowed to kill you emotionally, I'm allowed to kill you physically. You know, if I'm there just to train you to fix you. So to the level of the Rosh Hashiva, so much power, this is what he learned in the Maisa. The Rosh Hashiva said, learned the Maisa. 
that the job of the Rosh Hashim is so strong that he's allowed to even insult, to hurt a person emotionally, to the level that can even hurt him physically, emotionally, because it's all tied together. Because his job is to fix the person. That's his job, is to train him and tell him off. And people should have paid the Rosh Hashim money. Thank you very much. You saved my life. You told me the truth. Tell me how that did. Oh, but Rosh Hashim is worse than me. I see points he has. It's not nothing to do. To do that's his job. You have, a, you, have a, you have a basketball court, I call it basketball team, you have a coach. The job of the coach is to train. I remember many years ago. I said, I'm going to go. And the end, he definitely was speaking in the students. But at least in the students' head, they should have accepted that. I remember one time I went to this guy in Ishiro Rani Vance, he had a problem. He had a very famous band in the 60s, 70s, and went down. Was the name was the platoons. If you guys know the platoons. So I asked him, his brother was a very famous Margan for for Dupac and all those very famous guys. I don't even know the names. Doesn't matter. In Los Angeles was a big record game. He sold 10 million records, 40 million records, you know. Who knows? He was a big guy, big shot in the music world. So I asked him, what makes a very successful group music to win? He says, not talents. There's many groups with much more talents. It's what? They have a good coach that knows how to put and perpetuate the egos, because they're very deep, big egos. Music, musician people have big egos. So it's very hard to put them together, because a lot of talented people live on his own egos. And a good coach that knows how to put it together and set the interests of the egos together to go one, one way, he wins and they can win the, they be the best. He wasn't saying, that he can change the egos and train how to be good, how to let go. No, how their interests will fit their egos by having the egos and let the other ego go through. That's what he told me. I said, what? He says, yes, I'm very serious. It was very serious. He's like one of the top guys in the world. In the world. In the world in the 70s, 80s, 70s, 60s, very top guy. I mean, that's the same. So Rosh Hashiva, a rabbi, a good friend, you have to have a bad musa. They said, tell you to be a coach, they said, tell you off. Okay, sometimes you cannot tell all the time or when you can tell, how much you can tell, but you need to be in a position to be accepted, you want to change. Because a person doesn't see his own problem. Doesn't see, doesn't see his problem. Doesn't see his interest. That's what happened. All the other They had the interest to break away, they were good people. They converted. Moshe Rabbeinu convert stupid people, not serious people. All the Zayim were good people, and Moshe Rabbeinu put his stamp on him. Those are good converts, and they didn't leave like Yisroel. They didn't leave away. Hey, okay, we don't got. Hashem says you're going to have the land, inheritance of tribe. Where are we? What about the Eleva? Where's their land? They went faithfully. They will get a present and they'll get what they need. So they were good people. They're very good people. But the mix of interests, that when they lost all the interests of all the yoke being poor, more yoke, or more grab, the mitzvahs, was too much. So they were looking for ways out to break away. And they were smart to grab the interests, to perpetuate the interests of the tzaddikim of the generation. Hey, listen, bro, you know, we can't take this soil. Your job is going to, you're going to lose your job. You're not going to be here anymore. Wow. Blah, 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 blah. And they put interests together. And they combined it together and they broke away from Hashem. And Hashem punished them. It's a big insult. So a congregation of Hashem, a group of people in Yeshiva that doesn't have Musa, Achmon in Islam is very bad. It says in the Gemara and Saned, they don't finish with that. You know why Yerovam ben Evad became a king after Shlomo Amelech? Shlomo Amelech was a prophet, he was a big time. There was a guy named Yoav ben Evat. He became the, success, the successor of Shleim HaMelech. Yerechavam ben Shleim HaMelech only grabbed two, two, two tribes, and Yoav got ten tribes. What was the merit of Yoav ben Evat that he became the successor of Shleim HaMelech? And then he failed, he sinned himself worse. It says that Shleim HaMelech right below here in Yerushalayim. He built the big gate, and everyone that came to the three uh, to the three that they had to pay dues to the king's crown 
to pay for the building of the palace of the door of Pharaoh. Came Yehovah ben Nevat, was a simple Jew. And he came to Shlema Melech to the king. And he gave a rebuke. What are you doing? You're collecting money from the Jewish people for what? For an idol worshiper, daughter of an idol worshiper? That she's not really a real convert? As the Ramam says in Perek Alebin Chisurinibiya, that all those converts were converted by Beisdin Shalit Yoytot. They were converts, but were not gay at Tzedek. They were converts with interest, which means they didn't change their ways. So you're collecting money from the Jews and going up to the Regel, and you're going to take that money to build a palace for who? For a woman that's not a gay at she's a gay, she's a fool, she has an interest, and she really believes in the Zohar. She's all the same, she's still up in the Zohar. She has an interest, but it's not the same. Her being is not the same. And because he had the audacity, the strength to stand up and to say rebuke to Shoyma Amalek, he became the successor. He became the king after Shoyma Amalek. It says that Yom Abad, so he went to the bathroom, he saw fire came out of his aid. He said, what's going on? He said, that must be that she was giving me the power to, re- to, to say rebuke. He stood up and said rebuke to Shoyma Amalek. So to say rebuke, but not for a goal to put somebody down. Because if you're going to say rebuke with a goal to put somebody down, he's not going to hear you because he sees your emotions, your intentions. The intention put me down, not to tell me rebuke. But if you really have an intention, go full intention. We can make kind of thinking in your mind. I'm doing the mitzvah of loving my friend like myself. And therefore I want to change this Jew and I want to lift it. Think in your mind. Who told me that? Rabbi Adas, Rabbi Adas told me. When Rabbi Kaduri used to bless people or tell them rebuke. He used to say in his mind, He says, that's why all his bachos was with the a lot of bachos with the He learned to change people because he really had a pure intention to help people. But if you really have that intention, the person feels it, and you tell them with a full heart, you can change it. You really do a mitzvah. It's the biggest mitzvah. That's the biggest help. So our job in, in the yeshiva is to have, a, to have an open relationship of loving care to one another. And part of the love is to lift one another, uplift. Listen, you know, you have to get, get up more morning early, one to daven, sleep earlier. I see you talking tonight because we sleep earlier. You want to get up early, who knows what, whatever he sees. I see you too angry person, this and that. I saw you really overreacted when this guy told me that. I should have understood he wasn't really meaning that, whatever it is. To know how to say. But what about you? You were worse. I saw you reacted yesterday even worse. But if you really have the intention to work, you also work on yourself. You work on yourself too. So when people see that, they can hear. And that's the goal of the yeshiva. The goal of the yeshiva is, is to up, take all the other interests that we have in our hearts and our minds and our desires and to direct them towards Hashem, to untie all the other false desires and only put together, perpetuate. Desire, the true desire, which all of us have, others wouldn't be in All those Arab have had desire to connect that shit. Otherwise, they didn't become converts. They didn't come to the Jewish people and stop. They didn't decide to cross the desert and, and, and Yisrael ran away. They didn't. They took, they said, well, we're going to go through. They have to work on there. And then so you start free and you're to break away from the Oklahoma shit, which are.